okay, people, I'm back. Got another project. I acquired a set of, I just took two from a garage sale. The guy gave them to me for free. These are swing chairs, and the material got a little old. And they started tearing, ripping, and so forth. So I decided I could take it upon myself to go ahead and repair them. Because I research, and holy mackerel, do they ever want an expensive replacement fee for these chairs, or any chair, I believe, outdoor patio stuff. So I took it upon myself, and come to find out, I thought I could do it. So I'm going to do it. And the thing about it, I watched some YouTube uh, videos, and man, I'll tell you, good. YouTube is amazing. The stuff that you can learn, all the knowledge that you can gain by watching whatever you may have a problem with, and I'll tell you, it's just, that is amazing. So let's get with it. You know what a whip it is? Okay, first of all, you want to measure the width. It's best to use a cloth measuring Here's thing. my setup in the garage. I put a door on a couple of saw horses here. And there's my <laughs> antique sewing machine. So we're going to give that a try. And keep in mind, I've never used a sewing machine in my life. And this is quite an antique sewing machine. Back in the 20s, Early 30s it was manufactured, I think. I can't find a serial number or anything on it. I even have the original instruction manual. So we'll see how this works out. I'm kind of tickled about it. And hopefully we can get it done. Now we're going to remove these end caps. There's four of them. Save them for later and be careful because they may be brittle. They should come right out. There's a little end cap that goes on there, so you got to. The next thing to do is to remove the material, which you can use a razor box cutter and cut it off, but I take the bolts out. And this happened to have Allen wrench bolts. So I have to remove all six of them. Okay, as you can see, I've got the seat out, all the bolts are out. What we're going to do next is to pull this rind out here. Alright, I went ahead and sliced off the thing. And then I take a pair of pliers. And then you do that for the other side. Get that out of there. It just comes right out. <laughs> it doesn't really come right out. You got to pull on it. This one still has the side on it. Should be able to pull it like this. Probably, maybe vice grips would do better. I'll go from the other end. Well, let me try it like I did the other one. I'll cut off these edges. I just sliced my finger. Look at there. Ah, son of a bitch. Woo-wee. I'm bleeding. Look what they did to my thumb. Just kidding. Haha. <laughs> well, I'm back. Here's my thumb. And while I was in there patching this up, I decided to comb my hair. Okay? So we're going to continue on with this. Wasn't too bad. You, it, it'll work better that way, but you got to watch out for your foot now. There it 
comes. Don't jab yourself in the tummy. They are. So they're ready. Now, another thing is that when you're doing this and you got marks, you can sort of wash them down and give it a new coat of paint. So that makes it easy before you put the sim. Okay, so I got my material laid out. This is the color green because it was the cheapest material available, so I bought it. But after writing down your measurements, which I have here, you'll notice that we're going to cut the width at 23 inches. The reason behind that, you need a half inch seam and then you have another inch and a quarter seam, which folds over, which I'll show you later. The top and the bottom, we're going to cut to 44 and a half inches because you need a seam at the head of the cut or the, the seat and a seam at the bottom. So that's the way we're going to cut it. Okay, now that we have the measurements or my pattern mark marked out, we're going to try to sew the first hem on this. I mark this as a two inch from the border. This will be a seam across the top or the head of the material, the seat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over, which makes it a one inch seam. Now keep in mind, I've never done this before. Woo, woo. Okay. I'm grouping. I don't know when to stop this thing. I'm going to run another border along, another stitch or hem along there. See if I, I can try stay. <laughs> I think I ran out of bobbin. Got to check the bobbin. Try this again. Woo! I marked off in black one inch from the edge. And when I fold it over to the edge, it's a half inch seam. Okay, here we go again. I hope I can keep it straight and keep that one inch seam. Looking pretty good. Now this seam here, I got to do on the other side also, but that folds over into a one and a quarter inch seam where you put the spline through. So it doesn't have to be too critical with this. Now I got to do the other side. Okay, now we're going to sew the inch and a quarter seam on this with the half inch folded underneath inside. Hopefully it'll go straight. Now keep in mind you people that 
I've never done this before. And uh, if you have, and you have a wife, which I don't, I lost her five years ago. I'm so sorry. But maybe your wife can do this for you. Who knows? Onward. Now I'll do the other side, but I won't record it, so take a break. I'm doing okay. 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 So I got both sides seamed up, and in this hole here, in this channel, is where the spline will go. So I'm going to put two pieces of spline in here. This is the spline I was telling you about earlier. Getting there. There it is. So you want to leave a small end for pulling or whatever you may have to do. To get. We're almost done. We're doing pretty good so far. Okay, my next step is to put this attachment on there, replace that foot attachment. This here, I believe, I don't know what it is, but somebody insinuated that it was a zipper uh, guide, and I've never sewn a zipper. But the reason I'm using this is to get the stitch, I was, I was told this, to get that stitch close as you can to the spline that's in there. So we'll use this to get close. Do this. I have to use this hand because my thumb. You remember my thumb? I should make a video of this squirt. <laughs> so you remove that one and you put it aside. You don't hold on to it all this time. And then you put this one on. Looking good. We're looking good. Now if the measurements hold up, we'll be okay. Put it here, huh? Put it here. Now look at that, huh? Top, bottom, little tiny short, but we'll get this ironed out like that. Whoa, is that something else or what? Now the other side. Put the bolts back in. I started a couple of them, I only got two more to put in, then we gotta tighten it down. Thank you for watching. But the end result of the chair is coming. Okay, I got it done. They're all tight. Now we're gonna see what it looks like. Nice and smooth and tight, I hope. Now there's a job for you. I do say so myself. Not a wrinkle.
Now, if I can do it, you can do it. You're, young, you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> now I gotta cut off these edges and put the caps back on. Wow, while well, you weren't watching, I did the other one. Now, would you pay 30 maybe $30 into doing this, plus my time. And you know what? I did it in less than a day. I feel pretty proud that I got this done. And look at beautiful. Thanks for watching. But the string's already broken, and he doesn't really care. The key changing fast, it don't last for long. The Colorado Rocky Mountain High I've seen it rain and fire in the sky The shadow from the starlight Is softer than a lullaby Rocky Mountain High Colorado Rocky Mountain High